Hey there, I'm Natasha Antonioni with Austin Life, where we cover real estate, design, and all things Austin. Today, we are at MSW Lounge. I love this place. I have my Slenderita in hand, and we're gonna go in and see what's in this thing. Come on. Okay, here we are. This is Baldo, one of the founding partners, and his other founder, CJ. How's it going, y'all? How's it going? And he is gonna make us a Slenderita, right? It's got our Boost, which is a multivitamin. It's got pretty much any vitamin that you can think of for your daily intake, but it tastes a little bit better. And we're also gonna put some magnesium that's optimized for brain health, so it helps you, you know, create more synapses and just be sharp throughout the day. And we also put this glutamine. It's a gut powder. And I like this guy a lot because if you have any sensitivities, uh, it, it helps settle in your stomach and, and patch things up so that way you don't get those weird reactions that sometimes people can get with whenever they have food sensitivities. But we'll throw in a couple of these berries We'll add some lime and then some water as well too, and it's gonna taste amazing here in a second. And while you do that, we're gonna go take a quick tour of the space, yeah? Okay, come on, let's go check it out. So this is where they have all of their amazing vitamins that they make themselves. And this room has got um, lots of stuff going on. There is vitamin drips in here, as well as lunch and learns that happen every week with all kinds of experts. Two treatment rooms back here. They knew we were coming, yeah. so they're having a consultation in here. And then back here is where um, some spa services happen RPR, microderm, that kind of thing. And this room over here is kind of also used as like a VIP room. So if you're here working during the day, with a lot of people do that, and there's a lunch and learn going on, you can slip in there and get some work done. So John is another founder. He was in there and he's also the nurse on staff. So he is the one that's giving you the injections and all of that. And then back through this space, which is where we'll end up in just a bit, is their podcast room. So you can actually rent this room out and shoot your own podcast here as well. But they have, I think, three shows, they said. So let's go see what is going on with that drink. Oh, so good. This is my favorite drink for sure. <laughs> I love it. We are gonna dive into learning about what you guys do, but um, I wanted to talk about how we met because I think it's such a good example of like how you've kind of evolved your business. Yeah. So we were at a seminar called Wealthy Well Die, right? Yeah. And it was by Christina Wise, and it was about like your health uh, and your wealth, like all in one. Yeah. So she had all the, these panel of experts, including you guys, and then you had your bar set up. Yeah. So we were like drinking these things and I was like, whoa, I think I had three of them in one day and I oh, was yeah. like, bam. <laughs> um, but it was amazing because so many dear friends came out of that event for me. But it's kind of like how you guys run your business. You, you do these like lunch and learn things that it's all about the community. And like uh, you were saying, people even just come here and get their drips and like be on their laptop for hours yeah, at a time. Work, right, because that's what the back rooms are for. and. And t the first intention was like, this is what we're gonna do, like the more intense therapies. And it turns out, that, yeah, we do some of that, but it's usually more people like just wanna go back there and hang out, get on a phone call. We're starting to do more events. Like we're having, we're having a couple book launches and, mm. and people can still get their IVs, get the drinks and then do all that other stuff as well. That's so awesome. So um, you created this amazing space. And that is another thing that I wanted to touch on is, uh, my thing related to design is called intentional design. Yes. So it's how you build your goals and your dreams into your space, right? So this would be like an amazing example because it's something that you're looking at on a daily basis that kind of reminds you to stay on the path of health in Correct. your case, right? And so I came to this space uh, before and then the space is dramatically different now. Yeah. So um, how do you think it affects you on a daily basis to have this space be, it's truly intentionally designed, right? So how do you feel differently to work in this space every day? Well, first of all, I, I, 
I like coming here. And so before, well, first of all, it was also smaller. So mm -hmm. before I used to not want to come in here because I wouldn't get any work done mm. uh, because then I would just mingle with people and all that. And I'd get so frustrated. And, uh, and at some point it was like, I'm just going to go work at a coffee shop or, yeah. um, or you know, he's got a, a place over there and we'd go and do some stuff together as well. Um, we started talking about what we were going to do doing here uh, once we started to expand. And yeah, it was very intentional because we want to be able to promote health in every aspect like mm -hmm. it's, it's not about me saying what health should be for you it's really about what you make it and, and i think that that's a constant reminder and then especially because we spend a lot of time on our laptops over there working on video or audio mm -hmm. and it's you name the subject according to health and and we've we work with it at some point and try to make it flashy yeah right or, or make it work at least right so nice. so that's i mean but so yeah it's a constant great reminder um and I remember when we were, I didn't know what it was going to come up to be, but we were using some of this for some of the ceiling and, and, the, other, and yeah. the other part. And we just figured that will re look really cool. Um, and I think people really like it because it also helps drown out the sound. So it helps everything else. Totally. And, and I'm like a lover of texture in spaces. So it gives a lot of texture to the, the camera as well. So tell me about you two, because I, I haven't met you until very recently. So how did you two yeah. meet and how did this whole partnership begin? I guess so. I just want to compliment you on the first on the intentional design. So oh, Mike nice. Limangeli, who did this space, actually did my office space as mm. well. So I knew it was going to come out like looking spectacular like it it did um, before they even started. So shout out to Mike. Um, but I just really love that because really when you're talking about any type of business nowadays and brand it's more about providing an experience and giving a feeling to people um above and beyond just like whatever the product is mm -hmm. right so like how do you how do you make them feel welcome and you build a community around uh just health in general like y'all were saying so thank you for uh just taking notice of like that intentional design because it was built like that um but in terms of i'm trying to think when was the first time well, I came I, to hang out with you. There was one night that I was, I was meditating, and I was like, "Oh, I need to talk to CJ." And then we, came, I came over to your place. Because you were friends already. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And we've, we've always collaborated on like, "Hey, what do you do for this podcast?" Or like, "How do you shoot this?" Or "What's your system for that?" He's a systems guy, mm. and we've always shared like, "This is what I'm using now." Yeah, the beautiful part about the Austin community, and this is what I love the most, is like we all have our own businesses, but we kind of just meet each other like we'll be at a fitness event and be like yo what are you doing for your podcast or for your youtube and we just like trade um and we'll meet at coffee shops fortunately we both have our own offices so when he he came to kind of like pitch me the idea of we're building out this podcast studio would you be interested in helping us like get to the next level and something that i'm all about is my brand is about helping other mission-based people brands and businesses thrive so mm. how can i gather resources, gather people, gather like minds to help basically get everybody to the next level. So rising tides lift all ships is something I like to say all the time. Um, so it's just, we're all on the same page. We're not competing. We're just competing with ourselves. And I'm just fortunate that y'all created a space which kind of allows me to bring my expertise into it and then help other people level up as well. So some of the initiatives that we're really working on right now and then I'm passionate about is our lunch and learns because like my mom lives in Charlotte, North Carolina right now. So she can't get to this lunch and learn physically. Mm. So how do we create a production where it goes up somewhere where she can learn each and every week um, from John or whoever else we have to speak. And then on top of that, how do we help other local influencers and people that are basically pushing the needle of preventative health out into the world? How do we get their voices heard? Um, Podcasting is a great way to do that, and I'm just obsessed with having conversations with cool people like yourself. Uh, thank you for saying that because, uh, not that I'm cool, but <laughs> not that part, <laughs> but uh, the whole thing about the Austin community because it's exactly like our, our show is called Austin Life, and it really started off as this real estate and design thing, and the clients that were finding me on YouTube were like, you know, you really helped me understand Austin because we would do these neighborhood tours. Yeah. And that's how we decided to kind of take a deeper dive into the entrepreneurial network here because I have like never lived in a place where people are so open and sharing, you know? And it's just such a like joy to be a part of this place because it isn't competitive. And to your point, like the reason that we knew each other in the first place is because I have, I 
have struggled with health my entire life. Oh. Like I have celiac disease and my aunt died of colon cancer at 40. Oh my so when I turned 25, I was living in Houston and um, was really starting to look into my own health because I was like, wow, like I'm struggling with my digestive issues and I don't want to get colon cancer mm. in my mid thirties. So once I moved to Austin, I started looking around at places uh, to basically learn more and get involved. And the space here is great because when you come here, other people open up about their health struggles and allow you to be vulnerable. And mm -hmm. I think as soon as, especially as a male, like we're not vulnerable about our mental health and our physical health because mm -hmm. we're supposed to be tough, right? I love this whole idea of the protocol. So you guys could have uh, a client come in, right? And then you'll meet with them and then you put them on a program. Is that right? Usually, as far as the, the medical stuff, we'll, we can do blood work mm -hmm. and see all the d deficiencies. And we, I mean, whatever test you can think of, we can provide that. Uh, and, and then from there, we customize the therapies, vitamins, mm -hmm. IVs, um, according to that. So it's not like a regular IV place where you're like, oh, I'm hungover. Like, yeah. We have that, but... Um, but normally we just do it, but we don't put any meds in it. So it's a straight up just vitamins. Mm -hmm. um, and, and when we see results, so our, the, usually what happens is that every three months or so, or every six months at, at, at a minimum, we retest to see if, if the nutrition that we're giving them is, mm -hmm. is making changes. Yeah. Um, and so that's, that's, that's yeah. great. He does a lot of testing on his own already. Uh, and so there's plenty of people that know about testing that just don't do it because they don't know what the access is. But there's also plenty of people that come to us and say, hey, I got all this testing from my doctor. Tell me what it is. Yes. Uh, and, and so, How that, do I so read that's this really thing? And that's yes. like our next move is this like with the digital side of things is like, how do we gather data and then help other people? Because, again, there's only so many people we can help physically here yes but how do we showcase people how to do stuff on their own or how to learn on their own again like what got me involved is what he said those two things like how do we educate and then like how do we help other businesses grow because that's what i'm obsessed with and from a health standpoint it's how do we educate them on how to do things on their own when we're not here but then also how do they continue to help other people grow outside of just themselves so like mm -hmm. if someone comes in here and um, is doing the blood work themselves, how do we build out a digital model where like they have a course or a blog or something that they can send their mom or their dad or their brother or sister that may not Like break not it live. down. Yeah, Make like it break it down. Yeah. That might not live and we're working on like that digital packet where it's like you get this, as soon as you get your blood work done, it's just like you get a PDF or something that just That's explains amazing. everything and then hopefully encourages other people yeah. to start taking it into their own hands really because if you go to the doctor they give you what seven minutes versus yes. like we want to be able to give you a whole experience around just your tailored individual uh health practice that's so cool because i know like you get the the sheet which i just had blood work done and then it's like gives you what your number is on that thing which you don't even know what it is and yeah. then it tells you like what the normal range is but and then you're like, okay, you're just looking at the numbers to know if you're in normal range, but you don't even know what you're looking at. But yeah. also to that point, what's the normal range for you? Correct. Mm -hmm. So like, you don't know that unless you've taken tests for two years, three yeah. years, four years. So like one thing that, like Valdo said, I've been doing this prior to them and that's why it's a blessing. I was already doing this stuff and mm -hmm. to have a, a place to actually go um, and be around other people that are, do are doing this stuff on their own. I started learning that like, well, the average person isn't me, so like I'm only me. Mm -hmm. So if I have my blood work for five years, I can then say what is my normal range rather than like what is the average person's normal range? Because the average person in America, 40% are over obese. Right. I'm not obese, so like that's not average for me. So sure. it's just like getting the average person or uh, anybody that's around here to just get their blood work done every six months every year so that they can get their own averages is that's a so huge cool. i love that because it's like factor. i feel like in america we're always like putting this kind of lowest common denominator yeah. around things but if you're a real advocate for health and you're like super fit you don't want to compare yourself to that yeah, yeah. you want to well the thing about it is that we like as a nation we are pretty obsessed with numbers but not about ourselves mm -hmm. but we can get them yeah like, and so so it's really interesting because people do come and they're like well they say i'm in a normal range so doctor saw it and they're like oh no everything's good 
and there's so many times that I've heard John say like, well, you're, you're in range, but I'd like for you to be a little bit higher so mm. that we don't have to worry about it. So like, why don't we take care of that little number that is in range, but like, it's on the low end or on the high end. Let's bring it back down. You know, let's work on that before it becomes a problem, right? Like we see so many people that are like pre-diabetic or right before being pre-diabetic okay. and a normal doctor would be like, oh no, you're fine. You're in range. And it's like, yeah, yeah, like why three more pounds and you're considered obese, but, but you're pretty why, close. Why so. were we waiting until you were sick? Yes. Because once you are diabetic, then it's really difficult to make that change. Mm -hmm. uh, but if you catch it right before, and, and it, but it can be done, like if type 2 and you know type 3 diabetes, but, uh, but if you get it beforehand, then it's way easier. And, mm. and most of them is lifestyle changes, right? But... Uh, what I, what we love about IVs is that we don't have to worry about like, well, do you have gut issues that you can't absorb stuff? Like, mm -hmm. you know, do you have, uh, are you taking the the right amount? Like, you know, all that. Like, we don't have to worry about that because, well, you are absorbing it because it's going straight to mm. your bloodstream. And then we can start seeing changes uh, from there. And we try to keep everything uh, as a vegan source. I think there's only one thing that we carry that's not vegan. Um, but uh, But even then, other than that, it's like it's as clean as it can be pharmaceutical strength and everything even our even our supplements are pharmaceutical strength so. amazing yeah, yeah. it's and awesome the last thing that people need to ask themselves is like we all know people that have had heart disease or cancer alzheimer's diabetes the average numbers have gotten people there so like right. we need new averages for people because like the normal things that people are eating and that average obviously is leading to more death in all those different uh, diseases. So mm -hmm. we need to really reset what our average as a human being is. Um, and fortunately, hopefully, that's what we're striving yeah. to do. Yeah. Nice. Um, so where where is all this headed? Where are oh you guys, God. what do you see in the future? How do you health? What I see on that one is... Uh, so it's cool because we're, we've been looking at the website, we're, we're kind of redoing it, and the, the goal is to hopefully have that question, the how do you health, and then be a bunch of tabs of like, well, how, what do I do for health? Or mm. I read articles, or I go to the clinic, or I listen to podcasts, or I buy supplements, mm -hmm. or I go to conferences, or you know, whatever that is, you can find that in there and have a library of stuff. Mm. The idea would be great, like if you're having a gut issue, to be like, all right, what can I read about gut? And it pops up. Here's a podcast, here's an article, here's a place that you can go, here's a conference, here, like everything related to that issue. So that way, whatever you're struggling with, you're not having to like, well, what do I do? Mm -hmm. There's going to be plenty of answers for you. Uh, and that's that's what the real goal is there. Um, and then the clinic, I mean, we don't never really want to have a second clinic. Like This is going to be the spot. Maybe at some point we get to the point where we are training other nurse practitioners through our courses because we're going to have courses. Mm -hmm. um, and maybe they can do the same. But like I... John and I don't have any interest, I don't know if you do, of like managing two or three locations. Like it, one's enough. Yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> but then we can educate through all the courses and all that because that's way easier than mm -hmm. than having multiple locations. It's also impact, more impact. Like I look at it as like each one teach one, like teach people how to fish. Like with this little studio, how many people could we reach? Rather than like trying to open up other studios, yeah. and we've like tried headache. it. It's a lot of work, and it's yeah. not even. It's well, I have to tell you, I used to own two hair salons, and I had one, and it took me about five years to get it like super thriving. Right yeah. around three years, I started to pay myself, and then around five years, it was like, man, we are killing it now. And then I opened up my second one, and it was like a hose spiraling out of control. Yeah. And then two years after opening my second one, I didn't have either one. So, yeah. yeah, it was a pain, uh, well, painful journey, but lots of good lessons there about like yeah. not growing too, it's the number one reason that small businesses fail is growing too fast. Yeah. So it's like, ooh. Yeah. But, well, we've, well, the thing is we've done a couple consulting deals where like someone else wants to have a similar thing. It's like, mm -hmm. all right, we'll teach you how to read these labs and, and what to put in IVs. And all day we can do that, right? Yeah. Because it's easy. Here's the protocols, just implement them. I'll give you a, a sales lesson, a business lesson on, on how to like market this and, mm -hmm. and help your business. But uh, but we've also tried it where it's like, hey, will you guys open a second location? And it's it's exciting to, to, to be asked that. Like, Let's do it. it. Yeah. We can do it. And it's like, and it's not. It, it, it's not the same. The passion is not the same because yeah. it's, it's just a whole different avenue. I mean, it's like you said, like you have, you put all this effort. It could take five years and you wouldn't want to have to do that again. <laughs> right. It's like you guys don't have kids, right? I, we don't, no. Yeah. Like one kid, you're like, what is everybody talking about? This is like a piece of cake. Amazing. You're yeah. like obsessed with this awesome being, right? And then you have the second one. It's like, it's not like having two kids. 
it's like way more than that, you know? <laughs> and it's the same with the businesses. And who knows, maybe you'll change your mind one day, yeah. but hopefully you'll be smarter than I was. <laughs> well, I mean, the main thing, we'd like to keep expanding this. Yeah. So it's a whole well, academy. Well, you also have like the portal whole... of the screen, yeah, right? Like, correct. that's huge. Yeah, that's a, a whole, age. like, you don't need to necessarily have brick and mortar anymore, you know? Yeah, yeah, there's John yelling at his kid. <laughs> <laughs> but see, like, you see this building, it'd be cool if this whole building all of a sudden became the lounge. Like every like time one of the businesses leaves. That door you do this, and that door you do that, yes. that door you do yoga, that door you do whatever. I could see that, like where yeah. this is expanding and just having more people under one single roof. Ooh, I could see um, that. You yeah. guys would be the an and web of health. Yeah. Do you know so it'd be like an academy style where yes. it's just like you yeah. yeah where you're training up people to do their specific practice yeah good stuff is there anything that you guys want to highlight before no i mean do you want to bring in john for a second? sure hey yeah. john yeah here i'll trade out yeah you want to come on in yeah, here yeah. with us so we got the tornado here. I, w I was saying how the first time we met, you were like so excited about what you were talking about that it was like you get sucked into the John tornado. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I, I've, I've heard of vortex is the other term, oh, right? Yes. Like they get sucked into the vortex. Yeah. yeah, I'm passionate. You're very passionate. And his wife's from uh, Oklahoma, so he's experienced tornadoes. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. But like the, the thing is, I, I pulled this in here because the they practice what they preach, right? Like this yeah. is your lunch? Yes, that's my lunch. Yeah, yes. so... Prep to your door? Yeah, so they sponsored the Lunch and Learns that we were talking about. Okay. They're a fantastic company. They are vegan, uh, but they're also, um, what do you, how do you say Zero that? waste. Zero waste. Amazing. Uh, so they do offset the driving that they do to go deliver all this. Okay. Uh, they take your jars back. Uh, but yeah, it, like you said earlier, it's easy because you just open it. They take your jars it. back, so you get yeah. it back and then they refill it. And so, all so every week they drop off, you know, 10 meals and then they'll pick them the following week or the, the previous weeks. Mm -hmm. They have a rotating menu each week and when they use local farm to table uh, ingredients. So you'll always have a seasonal rotating menu from all the local farms outside of Austin. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah, yeah, it's amazing. And then it's all like, locally sourced. Well, I don't like to cook, right? right? So like it's easy. But you want to eat healthy. Yeah, eat healthy. Just right there. It's all done. Are you starving right now? <laughs> not quite. <laughs> Should not I get quite. you a fork? No, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> I'm Should I this, like, this in the fridge? No, you can set it down. That's fine. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So um, tell us how the whole journey started for you. Which part? The company. MSW. The company. Um, so I was finishing uh, nurse practitioner school. I was already practicing as a chiropractor, and then I started practicing as a nurse practitioner. And I was in a position to where I had a really good job. And Omar, who you just saw, he was just born. And so my wife was able to stay at home and raise him for the first year. And I was able to, you know, provide for the family. And uh, what I found was the job that I was quickly, you know, getting promoted in was a job that wasn't very fulfilling. And so when I would go home at night, I was very upset about, you know, everything uh, that I was doing not making a difference. And so we were talking about how you had to follow these protocols, but you you had more information to offer your clients than you were allowed to. Yeah, and I think that was kind of the issue is that most people who come in to a situation like mine where it's kind of like follow the leader, you don't want to disrupt the movement, right? Like so in like the pain world, which I was at, they had these ex certain exact protocols that everyone always followed. And anyone that came in was trained this exact protocol. So it was very much like an assembly line. Which is I, good for business. It's good for business, but <laughs> not good for Systems a creative are mind. Good for business. It is. it is. But it, it's not looking at the individual. It's not, and that was the problem I had. It wasn't, it wasn't uh, specific enough to the individual's needs. And so when I was looking at uh, doing any kind of uh, protocol for the individual, you had to take into account you know, how this person in front of you is, is going to respond to whatever you're going to give them. It's not just what worked for 10 other people. It mm -hmm. can work for you. And so as I was doing that, I started creating like my own protocols to help these people out who were not getting the resources they needed to get better. You were like slipping them little notes. Like yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, literally, I was like, uh, like if they had back pain, they'd never been in the chiropractor, which yeah. is incredible. And you know, here I'm talking about more chiropractic than ever. But I was like, let me show you this yoga pose that you can do. So I'd get in like, a, like upward dog on the floor with the patients, and then you know, after a while, they would kind of you know play along and yeah sometimes they do it or whatnot but usually it in with like just give me my pills right and so I was like all right well that's not really getting the message across like it should mm -hmm. so when I and it's not necessarily the mindset you want to be working with also, no it's right? not and I think that's a big point too and so 
as I've learned more about myself and my health journey, I've learned about what serves me. And working with someone who wants to get healthier is probably the biggest ask I could ever have for anyone. Sure. Um, if they're not wanting to get better, there's no point of having this conversation. So I was kind of heartless after a while where I felt like, you know, here, take your pills and yeah, get out of my way, you right. know? And they felt the same way. So I think about... That's kind of like sums up the medical industry, right? It very I mean, much I'm does. I mean, I'm sorry. I know people dedicate their lives to becoming doctors and they put themselves through all this schooling and everything. And maybe they start out with a good heart, but the industry itself can just wear wear these it good does. people down, right? It that that and, 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 and then having to pay those those uh, <laughs> those college tuition fees and loans, or and, and then that. even the the doctors having to chase the um, insurance companies for the money and yeah. all that, you yeah. know? Yeah, yeah. And so a lot of the stuff I I had the privilege of being a clinical director, uh, which was like kind of like the manager for the whole clinic. Uh, and I was able to see both, you know, behind the scenes and then with the clinical side as well. So managing people, understanding how, you know, certain people will uh, respond to delegation. And it was m very much like an assembly line. Like there's a system in place to where you don't vary off from what's been established over the past three, four decades. And I don't think that way. I don't think one dimensional. I'm, I'm, I would like to think outside the box. And so I was coming into like almost like um, resistance when I was suggesting things that were out of the norm. And I quickly found not only was I in a situation where people don't want to necessarily work with me to get better, but then there's also people I work with who don't necessarily want to hear what I have to say uh, as far as thinking outside the box and being creative. Mm -hmm. So I wasn't in a good situation that served me at all. And uh, You were being squashed. I was being squashed. Went home crying at mm -hmm. night. You know, made more money I've ever had mm -hmm. in my life, and I hated what I was doing. Right. Wasn't making the difference I wanted. And so... Uh, I basically had a nose breakdown, and then uh, my wife slowly started saying, like, you need to go out and kind of start exploring what it is that you need in order to be happy. And uh, I went on a, a, a trip to San Diego, stayed at a buddy's place, you know, saw the Pacific, uh, Pacific Ocean and just learned to surf, came back and said, you know what, I think I'm ready to be happy now. I got a hold of Baldo. We go to ACL Festival every year, and so we had an upcoming, I guess, fall trip, and I was like, you know, I'm not going to wait that long, but I'm going to present something to you. Would you want to work with me? And uh, he's kind of surprised. He's like, why, why? You know, and I was like, well, I'm at this job. I really don't like it. Uh, America and I want to have another kid. And so we're thinking a bigger family. However, like long term, I need something that's going to serve my needs as a professional. Um, and if we can get this started now, hopefully it'll feed into the idea we get a bigger family down the road. So time's now. He's like, okay, what, what idea do you have? Uh, I said, we have this idea for this vitamin IV bar you know, because we used to want to own a bar together when we were in college. Yeah. But we stopped drinking, and we said, well, we can't do that anymore, so let's do a health bar. And it uh, has never been done before, and Austin is a place for, you know, creativity and innovation, so we thought it would work. And health. And health, <laughs> and that was a big focus. And so the cool thing was uh, we had two sides of the story. Here's my best friend and, and business partner. He sells in marketing, um, um, health and, and wellness and medical. And so we taught each other a bunch of things, met in the middle, and created uh, an opportunity for both of us to find uh, something that we can pursue happiness with. Yeah. And in the process, we established pillars that allowed us to continue to uh, feed our souls, which is essentially what the whole company was started on, which was the idea of education and helping others grow. Mm -hmm. And if we educate people, they're going to grow because not only are they going to implement the things, but they're going to help others grow because they'll spread the message. And it ca causes a ripple effect. And so we've established those as our guidelines and pillars uh, and within the company, and we held those standards to ourselves from the very beginning. Uh, with every meeting that we pulled the car out of the garage on a Sunday night, we would sit there and talk one-on-one -on -one how we were going to change the world. And it started with how we systemized what we needed to do. We, I lived with them for the first two years just to get in, you know, living in upstairs in one of the rooms and, yeah. and just because I was like well I have to take a big you were living with the family and, and the family. Had, my car had gotten stolen so it was like well we just share a car because we're going to the same place anyways and um, you know just made it happen and you're still partners <laughs> and best friends which still, is like amazing that's yeah. that like not Doesn't the happen. case usually yeah well we just came back from a what five day trip to Colorado we went climbing and camping it's like you're on vacation and you still want to be together yeah, yeah pretty it awesome. is well we, we talk about what it's like to work with your best friend and uh, you know thankfully we don't fight but it's more of the idea that you you have so much appreciation for someone who gets up and you don't have to tell them to go do things. Like, you know, it's like, hey, I need you to go do this thing. No, he's already doing it. Mm -hmm. And it motivates you to push yourself harder. And I think it's really nice because Baldur's also one of the hardest working people I've ever met. And you don't want that to, like, you know, basically put you in a position to where, he, you know, he's questioning how hard I'm working. 
And when I have a family at stake, you know, there's no bigger motivation. And so what we have done uh, since 2016 is created several companies within a parent company. And we did it bootstrapping it yeah. on yeah. our own. And uh, we did it on our own two feet. So, for example, the way we haven't put a lot of money into marketing. What we did was word of mouth referrals. And the way we did it was we were everywhere that we needed to be. Mm -hmm. So, for example, if there was a, a health and wellness expo, we had a booth there. If there was a, a brand new yoga studio that just opened up and they needed some people to bring in, uh, we were there doing a pop-up. And we did all that, getting up 6 in the morning, 7 in the morning, yeah. staying until 7 at night sometimes, uh, working three, four-hour days in a row, uh, you know, just to, just to get, like, our name out there because nothing beats a handshake and a face-to-face -face because what we learned in business, and this is the best thing that's ever taught me, like me, know me, trust me, pay me. Mm. And so when we're out there presenting ourselves to people, in the business world, you're like an artist. You're throwing your passion out there, hoping that it resonates with someone. But don't be afraid that someone's going to walk by and, you know, not like what you're doing. But our story became what was the hit. They mm -hmm. liked the idea that two best friends got together, changed their whole lives to work together. Well, and, it's just like pure authenticity. I mean, yeah. like when I think of meeting you guys, I mean... Um, I knew that there was a product component to it, but <laughs> I just like I just felt safe and like I was in good hands. So I was going to I'm like, the, I'll buy everything. Right. <laughs> <Yeah>. So <laughs> it's like whatever you tell me to do, I'm going to get it because it felt true, you know. So yeah. you guys are just being yourselves, which I think is what makes it so magnetic. It, it's been a lot. It's been a lot of fun. What's crazy about it is that my drive for it as well at the beginning was was the idea that anything that I came up with is like, hey, well, let's go do this. And like, no, we can't do that because it's medical. It's like, oh no, we can't do that either. And I was like, damn it. Like, if anything, like it wasn't a frustration. It was more of like, well, that means I get to create something from scratch. Mm. Because in the medical world, any office you go to, they, it's all pretty much the same because mm -hmm. it works yeah. and it makes money. Yep. Right. And so but for us, it wasn't about that. It's like we want to create a very unique experience. It's like, how do you make a bar, an open source mm -hmm. b b community and people are just talking about their health, which is completely the opposite of what medical offices are. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, stay within the legal. Nobody limits. wants to go like sit in the waiting room at a hospital. No, yeah. yeah. But you don't you're happy to sit so, in the waiting room yeah. here. You're going to yeah. like meet some cool person. Yeah. yeah. That you're going to have some great conversation. Yeah. And I mean, and no subjects off limits. I mean, people right. talk in there anything from like the worst, like type of physical health experiences yeah. all the way to like, I'm trying these like whatever, psychedelics yeah. or whatever. And, right. like, and, and it's just <laughs> and it's just an open source communication and people yeah. can talk and we're cool about it. And it, what's what I love about John is that people will come in and like, well, I'm trying this. He's never like, that's not going to work. It's mm -hmm. like, well, tell me more about that because I want to see how it could work. Uh, and why it has worked for other people, and then we kind of can tell people about it, right? And yeah. we love referring people in other places too. It's like you should go see that person. Yeah. I love what you said earlier about John. That John, you'll be looking at the re the report from their blood work, and then it's not about what's normal about uh -huh. being in the normal range. You'll yeah. be like, um, but what's normal for you? Sure. Like you don't get that from a doctor. It's it's more just like, oh, here's the report. You're in the range. You're good to go. Yeah. Next I, was, year. I was mentioning how people would come in and like, hey, I got all this blood work. Can you tell me what it is? Yeah. <laughs> it, it's weird. I don't know how people find out that I, I read blood work really well, but, you know, someone will say, hey, I got these labs done with this doctor. They said everything looks good. And most people will, you know, say, I, I don't feel good. You know, right. like I, I, what's what's normal range for someone else could be something different. I just different. had this experience, by the way. And yeah. I was like, I, I, I'm, I'm coming here because I... I want to be preventative and I want to, I feel like I'm not feeling my best. Yeah. And then it was like, oh, you're fine. Yeah. And Here's a vitamin. Well, the frustration was that I got out of that world where everything was already set as a template in the pain world and got into this world where there was another template. It was the idea that this is what we've done for everyone to this point. So, for example, the functional medicine term is technically what we're part of, but I don't have a credential in functional mm -hmm. medicine. Chiropractors are just taught that. And uh, when it comes to nutrition, a lot of stuff that we've learned through the labs and everything has been our own research. And so one of the coolest things about our opportunity working together is that there's no template. One of the frustrating part is that you don't really have a lot to compare it to. So when you look at it the opposite way, you say, yeah, there's no one to tell us no because it hasn't been created yet. Mm -hmm. So like, let's try something and see how it works. And so for the functional medicine world, it's all about finding the root cause, which means you have to be a sleuth. Mm -hmm. And so really what I'm looking at is I'm a detective. If you come in, you will tell me one thing, mm -hmm. your labs tell me something different. Right. And so I'm like, I believe both of you, <laughs> but I find Because they trend. may believe what they're saying, actually. They, yeah. they will, because sometimes like Baldur would say, well, I'm not sick. 
I don't, if, I, if I don't believe I'm sick, there's no way that disease thrives in me. Mm -hmm. And I believe that, mm -hmm. right? But I'm saying, but your labs tell another story. Like mm -hmm. it says, like you had a, an infection recently and you were battling it. I can see your white blood cells were a little bit low, you know? So when you see that, you see a trend. And I think what's more interesting is you have to take account someone's personal view on their health. Like doctors nowadays don't, mm -hmm. and which is unfortunate because 90% of your diagnoses will come from your history intake, which mm -hmm. means the patient or the client has to come in and tell me exactly What's going on with you? The doctor has to have longer than five minutes to ask questions. Otherwise, they're going to say like, well, I don't know, but take this and here you go. And it's just a symptom fixer. Mm -hmm. So when you look at getting to the root Which cause. Which is going to lead to some other something ailment. Something else. Side effect you have to take this and other thing And now you got to do this. Yeah. And then like it's going to break down this. And then you got to yeah. deal with that. And see, and that, that was the problem. When I was in the office in the traditional setting, I was there for 15 minutes, sometimes 30 minutes at the most. If a person has waited their whole month to come and see the doctor or the practitioner and ask them all the questions that they need, and they only have 15 to 30 minutes, you feel shortchanged. Mm -hmm. And there's not enough from the practitioner standpoint because I guarantee you that practitioner, what's like me, 30 patients a day, I, I'm sorry, like that's a lot to keep up with. That's a lot of paperwork. So you do what you can. And the doctor who I worked with, love this guy, but he told me this, you do one thing for one person each time. And I said, I get that. The problem was that one thing was like a prescription. Mm -hmm. The one thing I could do for a person that would be more meaningful would be teaching that person how to sleep, mm -hmm. right? That's going to take more than a 30-minute conversation possibly. So I had to be in a situation to where you'd start talking about things in a different light, but it makes the bigger picture seem smaller. So if a person is feeling ill, it's not as simple as saying, take this, I hope everything mm -hmm. works out. It's more of saying, I bet you there's something that you didn't realize that's causing this issue. And if we think about it long and hard, it might be a simple fix. You're eating sugar and it's causing your stomach to bloat and that's causing your weight gain. We got to get to the idea of why you're so fixated on, on sugar. Mm -hmm. That's the real problem. You want to come sit with your dad? You want to come in here? Come here, babe. Okay. <laughs> We're almost fair. done. We're almost done, buddy. We're almost done. Yeah, it's a frustrating story that's heard countless of times here. And you'll still hear it. People will come in here and say, why isn't the doctor ever say this? So I went to this doctor and they said I was fine and I wasn't. I feel that one day there might be a time where the doctor gets overthrown by, mm -hmm. by the client. I, I so feel like when you guys were talking earlier, I just felt this like this it, it, like it's going to be displaced. Yeah. It's just not working. It's not. You know what I mean? I mean, yeah. like we are sicker than ever and it's, it, you know, we're the most obese country in the world. Is that right? It's one of them. Yes. One of them. I mean, it, it's just not working because we're not looking at the individual human. We're in this like formulaic system. So to have somebody sit with you, how long were you in there with that guy? Oh, I don't know. Probably an hour. Yeah, I mean, I mean, yeah. And that, it was funny about this is uh, that was not planned at all. It was we started talking and you start understanding how that person, well, why that person came here. Mm -hmm. I think it was one of the best things in the world to ask someone is, how are you doing today? And be sincere with it. Mm -hmm. Because if you ask that person how you're doing, they will be honest with you. Right. And that's how you start getting healthier because you let your guard down. Mm -hmm. Imagine a guy comes in here because their wife sent him in here. I know everything about that wife. We know everything about that husband. But the husband doesn't know we know that. Mm -hmm. And so the husband comes here and says, I don't know why I'm here. My wife told me to come here. And I'm like, well, come on. I know you're probably a little down the dumps and the sex drive's not there. Right. It's okay to talk about that. Everyone has these issues. Mm -hmm. And I was telling that gentleman back there, too, that we've met people. Not who that very, he has that issue. Not those issues. <laughs> but, but, but I was talking about a different story, not pertaining to that. But this was more of like, because he was opening up about stuff that we were talking about, not pertaining to this, but, you know, diet and stuff. And it was funny because I said, we met very successful people here. And they have things from depression, anxiety, and imposter syndrome that won't escape success. Mm -hmm. They function past all that. But that's how most bodies are. We're a vehicle that's like a car. You can drive your car at 200,000 miles, and it'll be fuming at the back. But if you can drive it 200,000 miles and take care of it the whole way, you can go another 200,000 miles on it. Mm -hmm. And that's how I really look at it as a body. It's just a car. People that come in here, they're looking for tune-ups. And then there's people who are looking for overhauls. And so what we try to tell them is like, look, let's figure out where along the path something's off. And if it takes us a couple tries to get there, that's fine. If I have to ask more questions, that's fine. But we're in this together. And what's the coolest thing about it is I've never been in a situation before in a job where when people come in, they're, willingly, they're, they're willing to meet us halfway. Mm -hmm. I am ready to get healthier. I haven't found a way or I'm, I'm lost. Please help me. I'm ready. And now you're being put to your best use 
because that's what your like calling is. Yes. And so now you get to do your calling. So it's like the circle of fulfillment, it you is. know? It's like I was saying to my husband recently, like, you go get happy and you be selfish about that because by you doing that, we're going to have a happier house. Yes. And so it's like, you know, we have to, the, I don't know, the message is like we have to trust ourselves and move towards whatever that thing is and express that thing. Like uh, the hashtag that we use is live your dream already. Yeah. And yeah. so like whatever that is for you, yeah. there's not the dream. It's live your dream yes. already. You know, well, yep. the crazy thing about it is that this is also a place for for our happiness. Right. Like there's right. so many things that we learn from our clients, that the things that they've tried that are like, well, maybe that'll work for me. Right. Like uh, uh, and and then we want to try those things, too. So. So in a place, it's almost like we've also built a place for our own healing. That's right. Because we're always healing, right? Yeah. Like there's always something else to, even even if it's not that, it's like it's it, there's always room for improvement or for like where, where can we optimize? Like we always like to say like feel optimized. Like mm -hmm. we're like let's optimize any aspect of our lives, and we learn from our clients all the well, time. Well, you've you've yeah. built a community of these people that are motivated towards health. So it's it's this incredible learning environment. Is there anything that you want to say in closing? Um, if you're an Aussie, come by the lounge and, uh, and so wait, you get a free, you get drink. a free drink. Um, and you also get a free B, uh, B12 shot and, uh, um, injection. An, injection, an actual injection. Yeah, just got to clarify. We'll that. even do a, a free 15, like in home, a free 15 minute console with John, just to like go over like what, what's your history. Might turn and, into 30 minutes. But. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, throw, I'll, throw, I'll throw a few more minutes in. Don't worry uh, about it. The lunch and learns are free. Come and hang out and come, come be a part of a community. Cause that's one thing that, uh, that, here, there's plenty of free things to do in here. Yeah. <laughs> and so might as well take advantage of that because then you feel like you're part of a community. Honestly, like if you are coming into Austin and you come here, you will immediately have a family. Yep. Uh, and, and that's it's so that's true. no question. Yeah. Um, and so that that's fantastic. Well, thank you guys yeah. for your time today. Thank and you we'll, uh, so mswlounge.com. Yes. Right? And, yep. And howdoyouhealth.com. Okay. Yep. Good stuff. Thank you. All right. Yay.